Okay. And from that framework, Richard, what would you say are your key insights and how that, that are different from the traditional way of looking at it? Well, one of the key insights is that debt always grows faster than the economy itself. And I spent decades in my banking career not even thinking about that, but to the extent I did, assuming that debt, you know, ebbed and flowed, that it went up, went down, but it, you know, over time it was in a similar range. That's not even remotely true. Debt always grows faster than the economy. And we see that in the seven largest economies in the world that together constitute 60 plus percent of GDP. In the US, you know, circa 1980, debt to GDP, total debt, government debt and private sector debt was 125% of GDP. Today, it's more than double that level. So there's mm -hmm. no equilibrium. We are getting more and more leveraged as economic entities. So that's the first thing that kind of hits you in the face like a two by four. You know, we're getting more and more leverage. One of the other things that really is, you know, a central conclusion of this book, and again, was something that I hadn't thought about, but is, is abundantly ever evident from the data is the more debt you have, the higher the net worth of households go. So in 1980, at the time, you know, total debt's 125%. Household net worth is about, let's call it 350% of GDP. Here we are, you know, what is it, 40 something years later, debt has doubled. Net worth, the net worth after subtracting debt of households is now almost 600%. So we, we actually demonstrate in the book that debt, increased debt actually causes asset values to go up. And, you know, that's good news insofar as it goes, but we also see show that it, it, it severely increases inequality because the top 10% are the primary asset holders. So they're seeing their net worth go up, you know, abundantly and folks kind of in the middle class and below uh, are not seeing increases in their net worth to GDP. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, yeah, a few things there. So you talk about the tendency of debt to grow faster than the economy. And are you talking about both private and public sector debt? Or, Yep. Okay. Yeah, and the you two call... added together. Yeah. And you call this a debt staircase. Is that correct? Yeah, we're very intentional about that because most people call it the debt cycle. And while that's, you know, somewhat accurate, it implies that debt returns to the previous level. Well, that essentially never happens. Mm. Debt will go up rapidly and then might come down, you know, a little bit. It almost never comes down at all, frankly, and only in a calamity. And then it might plateau for a little while and then it uh, rapidly ascends again to an entire new level. So we, we felt like debt cycle in a certain sense was misleading. So debt staircase really talks about we jump up to a new level, plateau, jump up to an even higher level. That's really been the history of debt in most countries. 